You want me to talk to you or to um, the camera? Probably or more both? to the pro yeah, probably more to the camera if you okay. can, but you can kind of split the difference. Okay. Hi, I'm Stephanie Houston. I'm 45 years old, and I am one of the co-founders of High Run. How did you get this job? <laughs> You know, that's kind of a funny story. Um, it's it's definitely a, a uh, from from the ashes kind of story. But I had a, a venue here in in Deep Ellum, and right around the corner from me was was a winery, um, Calais Winery. And uh, Ben and I were friends. Uh, ben owned, owned Calais, and and we were you know talking back and forth about about some different projects one day, and basically. Lagrange was coming to an end, and and I knew that I, as successful as it was, and as many awards as we won, um, we couldn't make any money, um, and so I had this opportunity to move to Austin, and, and in just like a very short period of time, literally four days, um, picked up, sold everything, gave it away, and moved. And during that time, I I wasn't sure what I was going to do. I, I had been an entrepreneur for 20 years, and and didn't have a job, I didn't have a plan, I, I just didn't have anything and I felt really super lost. Um, and I was at a store one day and I was thinking about what I was going to do and, and to be honest I was day drinking um, at, at a grocery store and I saw this magazine um, called the Edible Austin and when I opened up the magazine um, I, I saw Ben's picture and I immediately messaged him on Facebook and I said, hey, I, I can't believe this, like what happened? And, and he was telling me, you know, about this 290 wine road and how exciting it was and, and that's where his new winery was gonna be. And I said, you know, I don't have anything going on. I will come out and volunteer and uh, show me what you do. And, and so I went out there and we were actually just putting up uh, wood panels on his wall. Like, we weren't even making wine or anything. And uh, he mentioned this rum project. And instantly, I just knew, I said, you know, if you are ever, ever looking for a partner, it's me. <laughs> Please consider me. Um, and, you know, a few months went by, and, and over time, he would call and, and say, you know, can you cover the winery? And each time I was like, is it rum time? Is it rum time? And he was always like, no, it's not rum time. And, and one day, I didn't ask. And uh, he said, it's rum time. Uh, do you want the third spot? And I think uh, that's that's how we got into this craziness. So uh, we, we talk a lot in the series about work hours and traditional work hours. What hours do, do you work? So the distillery primarily operates in the weekend. Um, but of course, this is kind of one of those 24-7 20, businesses. Um, my schedule, per se, is, is all around the clock. It, it could be a couple hours here, a couple hours there, or like three days in a row. I wear a lot of hats there, so when I'm doing things at the distillery or, or when I'm doing an event off-site, like it's very specific hours, but I think when you're trying to build the brand and when you're trying to really um, create the pipeline of, of consumers, um, there's so much that goes into that and, and it's, it's just around the clock. What kind of education or training did you have or do you have to have to get, in, to get into this? Well, you know, I think what it comes down to is um, life lessons. Uh, I have a degree, I have a bachelor's degree from, from the University of Texas, and it has nothing to do with what I do, as most people say, right? Um, however, I, I think what it did is, is it put me into the corporate world for a little while where I really honed in on some skills that, that I may not have ever had before, you know, from, from different mentors. I think mentoring and, and finding those leaders that, that show you how to be who you're going to be um, is so critical because when you're an entrepreneur, those are the people that you emulate, right? So I think uh, it's a combination of, of the education and, and continued learning too. I, I go through executive coaching and, and I coach other entrepreneurs um, on, uh, on how to be better at what we do for a living. And so those kind of things, I think, are just invaluable. So typical day, how do you how do you spend your day? 
Oh gosh, um, you know, it, it depends. Um, I, I mentioned that I do some uh, consulting for some other business owners. Um, that's that's kind of like my sweet spot. Um, I do that um, and then I, I it's very segmented. So I, I switch gears a lot. I'll spend a time block doing this, a time block doing that, and a time block, you know, doing the next thing. Um, for the distillery, again, it kind of depends on, on what we're doing that day. If it's an event, you know, we're gonna spend the 12 hours previous prepping for that event and then load the car, jump in, execute, do craft cocktails or whatever it is we're doing that day and, and be a bartender. I mean, so it, it's, it can be anything. It could be, you know, being the, the salesperson or, or, you know, like I said, slinging the drinks. Best part, what's the best part of this job? Oh gosh. Um, you know what the best part is, is we have, as a team, and, and there's three of us that, that own High Rum, we have created a really fine product that I am super proud of. That's the best part, because when you see all of the work that goes into it, the hand bottling, the, the craftsmanship, the, the sophistication um, that, that's in that bottle, I think is, is what makes me so proud. And the second part of that, um, is seeing somebody enjoy it. Geez, I mean, how can you how can you not love that? Um, is there a third part? Absolutely, seeing it on a shelf someplace, whether it's in a store or you know in a restaurant. Any of those things I think are are so key to to what we do because it's like a little vacation in a bottle, right? That's what people think of when they think of rum. So flip the coin over. Worst, what's the worst part? Of the job. Oh gosh, um, the worst part. Sometimes in this business, you have to depend on a third party to actually deliver your product. And for us, um, that has been a little bit of a struggle because we have things ready to go out the door and we can, I can go out and close sales to, to the best locations. And it takes that third party because of, of federal laws and, and state laws to actually go out and deliver it. Um, and so if you don't have a good partner in that space, um, everything crashes and burns. So you've done, I know you've done lots of different things. Would you say this is your ideal dream job? Oh gosh, um, you know, how could you not love alcohol? Um, and, and I mean that in, in, a very, um, in a very loving way, <laughs> in a very safe way. Um, but I, I think it's the concept, right? It's the concept of, of building something new from nothing. Um, stepping into an industry that I knew nothing about except for you know how to drink a pina colada um, or how to order one going in and, and and building it from the ground up creating the process creating um, the brand creating the the look and the feel and 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 all of that that goes behind it and then launching it out there and seeing you know is this gonna stick can we convince people uh, to see what we see that's the beauty, right? So, so is it a dream job? Absolutely. And would I like to do it 10 more times with 10 other different things? Of course. When do you see yourself doing this in five years? I think so. Um, I, I think for, for me um, as an entrepreneur, some of the things that I've done are, are specifically to build businesses with the intent on either expanding them um, with investors or actually selling them um, and kind of moving on to the next process. Um, so for this particular um, business, I absolutely see this. I, I would love for us to be the next Tito's, the next um, Deep Eddy Vodka, you know, coming straight out of Texas with like a, a hardcore brand that, that that people recognize and, and see and believe in. Um, crossing state lines, crossing international lines, it's gonna take some time, you know, for us to get that kind of reach, but I, I absolutely think that's possible. So what advice do you have, would you, would you give to someone that's considering going into this industry? Yeah, the best advice, I could give is to not be afraid of failure. Um, this project came from a failure, um, and, and while you know, like I mentioned, we we won every award at Lagrange, we won every you know, it was beautiful, it was a great place to be. Um, it it ultimately was was a failed project, and I think that when you can rise from that um, level of failure, when you get knocked down a little bit. Being able to, to stand back up and, and having you know the, the gumption to do it again 
is so critical because I think even if it's the same project, if you have a failure within the project, course correct. Um, course correct, get back on track and, and keep going. And, and that is, I think, something that uh, nobody tells you that it's, it's okay to, to miss. Common misconceptions. Are there any common misconceptions <laughs> you run across when you say I work for High Rum and we're? Yes. Um, typically, um, at, specifically at, at High Rum, um, I think there's this misconce misconception that uh, most distillery owners are men. Um, while that is primarily true, I think that there is a rising force of women um, that are coming into this industry that are master distillers that are putting forth a, an amazing product as a female owner or, or maybe a completely female run. Um, that's a huge misconception um, that, that it's an all male industry because it's not um, and I feel like I'm at least a, a little piece of that. This is a really random question, but music's a big part of life. Do you get to listen to music <laughs> yes. while you, okay. Oh my gosh, um, yes. You know, coming out of the, the music industry, um, that that's, music was a part of our life. Um, my, my kid's a musician, you know, so there's, there, we're always surrounded by music. And, and that's one of the things that I love about High Rum is at the distillery specifically, we always have an island soundtrack going on. I mean, so you've got the drink in your hand, you've got the music playing, you're on vacation. You get vacation time, sorry. <laughs> Daily. <take> like <laughs> <laughs> Daily vacations, right? Um, yeah, you know, that that's kind of one of one of the um, the pitfalls of being an entrepreneur is it's vacations are something that definitely have to be planned. But I feel like as long as you have a good planning, you have a good team behind you, um, you're never doing it all by yourself. I, I, that's another piece of advice. Don't do it by yourself. Um, but when you have the support, uh, behind you, whether it's in staff or, or partners or whatever it is, um, planning that is is critical. I think you know, for us creatives that that go out and, and do these things in the world, um, you have to have that downtime. Future plans, way down the road, like you know, retirement. You know, you you've, you've done all this creating. What do you, where do you see yourself? What, how are you gonna spend your time? Um, besides on a beach with a Mai Tai, huh? Um, let's see. I would love, love, love to, like I said, see this brand expand internationally. Um, I, w I would love that. I would love that coming out of Texas. Um, I think that's gonna take some time. Like I mentioned, I'm 45, so I'm kind of hitting into that last phase of maybe career. I don't know, that's that's kind of what, how we're conditioned here. Um, and I don't see that stopping. Um, I, I don't ever see a moment where I would technically retire. Um, would I retire being a, you know, behind the bar? Absolutely. Um, but I think like, as somebody who is, my passion is business, um, is, assisting you know and, and consulting and doing all of those things I don't I don't ever see that stopping I don't ever see I always have ideas you know I have a, a thousand doors in my head that open up and say hey what about this what about this what about this um, and I, I I'm gonna do that until I die Last question. Last one. Had it to do over. Would you do it again? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, I think of the, all of the pain that I went through at LaGrange. Um, I think of the the money and, and the heartache and just everything that went into it. And, and I'll be honest, like I couldn't go back to Debellum for about four years. I, I literally just could not step back in there. Um, and you know, they say, you know, out of the ashes, the phoenix rises, and, and there it is. And, and something great came out of that. Um, I had so many great relationships and, and so many people that said, hey, you know, I, I got married there. I, I had my graduations there. Um, we had so many things that happened that were so amazing for other people. Um, and I think that I would absolutely do it all over again. Maybe a little different, but absolutely again. On the next work that we do, join me, Joseph Ibarra, as I talk about my job as a vintage t-shirt reseller. So hit the follow, subscribe button, that little notification bell, and we'll see you soon.